What is going on guys? While the block is at the machine shop, I figured I would take this time to dive into parts selection. Um, so for this build, I'm definitely wanting to uh, keep reliability at the forefront of my decisions as well as um, just in inking out a little bit more power kind of from every aspect that I'm able to. Uh, and I think it shows that uh, through the part selection, reliability is is the top factor in the decision making. Um, so we'll take a look at my computer. Gone are the days of cheap Jeep Stroker builds. Five years ago, you could stroke your engine for under 3K, including machine work. Now you'll spend an arm and a leg for that extra torque, so much so that it'd be cheaper to just slap a supercharger onto your decent engine. But we're doing it anyways. Starting with the crank, a cheaper option would be a used 4.2 crank out of a CJ. And the more reliable option without the extra machine work would be a new cast crank offered by SCAT. To make it even easier, Clegg Engine sells rotating assembly kits. These are budget-minded as opposed to kits offered by HESCO or RUS. These stages can be translated to octane level you'll need to run. 8.8 .8 to 1 runs cheap gas, 9.3 runs mid-grade, and 10.7 chugs premium. I chose the Stage 3 kit as it offers good detonation resistance, naturally aspirated, as well as kindly offering more power when boosted. I opted for SCAT's forged rods with ARP bolts and cleavite rings and bearings as cheap insurance to round out my rotating assembly. Okay, so for camshaft selection, obviously there are a million and one different options ranging from, uh, well, stock to, um, you know, mild cams to extremely aggressive cams. Uh, now from uh, reading through forums and all that stuff, it seems like people are having reliability issues starting with uh, camshaft selection. So I actually opted for a new uh, new ground milling camshaft in the stock uh, stock grind, but I ended up going with 1.7 ratio uh, roller rockers as opposed to the uh, stamped 1.6, and that should uh, give me just a little bit more uh, power out of the camshaft with still having the reliability of all uh, of the stock camshaft and all of the stock um, valves and valve springs. So I think it should be pretty sweet on that aspect. Diving deeper into piston selection, there's one problem with these. They're actually too short. The compression height is one and 383 thousandths, sinking them into the block 27 thousandths. This is actually easily solved by machining the block, those 27 thousandths for the zero deck. Uh, my complete setup bumps me up to 9.7 to one and forces my hand into premium fuel. I'm not too worried about it if this is my biggest issue. And then past that, everything else is completely stock or OE spec. Um, I ended up going with OE uh, oil pump and water pump. Um, I wasn't having any overheating issues and I've got a whole plethora of uh, cooling upgrades as it is, as well as uh, my oil pressures were completely fine. Um, so I didn't feel the need to have a uh, high volume or high pressure in those aspects. Um, and then everything else is just OE reliability. Um, I, it was definitely more expensive to do it that way. There are a lot of things that I could have reused, um, but in the namesake of reliability, I ended up opting to replace those. Um, I mean, alternator starter, all that stuff. Um, is being replaced with OE spec stuff. So um, should be a pretty sweet build. I should have it back hopefully by the end of this week, maybe early next week and can get um, rebuilding it. Uh, until then, I really appreciate uh, you guys subscribing, you guys liking and commenting, all that kind of stuff. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, so I will see you on the next one.